Hi, everyone. Thank you very much. We, we just need a few minutes uh, of your attention. A brief program that we have here for you, and I thank you very much. Feel free to drink and do shots while I'm up here. I'm not opposed to that. Bring me one if you don't mind. Uh, my name is Sherilyn Jolly Nagel. I'm a farmer from Moss Bank, 45 miles southwest of Moose Jaw. I'm a Saskatchewan director with the Western Canadian Wheat Growers Association. And uh, some quick finger counting math tells me that this is my 15th year on the board of the Wheat Growers, kind of a recycled director. And fortunately or unfortunately, there are no fewer policy issues uh, today than there was back when I first started, uh, which is good news for those of us who love to argue about farm policy. So I'm happy with that, no shortage. So tonight I've been given a few minutes on the agenda to talk with you about the importance of farm policy and how the laws of the land affect our bottom line and how through the wheat growers you can take action to influence those laws. For the past 15 years, I've considered farm policy to be the most fun that anyone can have. It might be a, a gross exaggeration perhaps, but I'm really trying to sell it tonight, so go with me. Uh, most, most fun might be pushing it somewhat, but I think that I can make a really strong case for policy being one of the most important ways to improve your farm's profitability. In my quest to convince people that policy deserves their time and energy, I'm often met with great resistance. Too many people believe that to like policy means to like politics. And politics these days is a really hard sell. So if politics doesn't equal if policy doesn't equal politics, then what exactly is it? If you Google it, or for those of you from Bill Cooper's generation, if you look it up in the dictionary, <laughs> farm policy is the relationship between agriculture, economics, and society. Society is a pretty interesting factor these days, especially with the onset of social media, because it's made it much easier for the general public to be aware of the policies that are now put in place. So egg policy describes a set of laws around agriculture. And if you look at the analogy, it's, it's a, you can use a sports analogy for just about anything in Rider Nation, so I'm gonna do that for you. Farming is the sport, and egg policy is the rules around that sport. The spectators, of course, are society, and their interest in our sport and the dollars at stake is growing. So this is the Google definition of what egg policy is. And frankly, nobody with a heartbeat is gonna get overly excited about this. But for me, farm policy is my dad yelling on the phone. I, as a kid, recall hearing my dad's frustration echo and reverberate through the walls of our house as he'd be yelling about the latest policy issue. Now, I don't want to say that my dad was an angry man, because that would describe him perfectly, <laughs> but he was passionate. And to this day, when people describe me as passionate, I chuckle a little inside, because I think what they're really saying is, tone it down a little, Sherilyn. So I'll be the first to admit that I do enjoy a good argument. You can ask my husband to verify. And farm policy has no shortage of ways for us to argue. And my passion did begin as a kid, hearing my dad talk about these important issues. Issues that were important enough for him to spend decades of his life to organizations like the wheat growers, trying to influence the various levels of government and achieve the changes that he believed would be beneficial to his farm. So I'm grateful that he could pass along that passion slash anger to me. Over the past 48 years, the wheat growers have had many policy wins most of which people don't realize are attributed to an organization like the wheat growers. 
Protein grading is one that Bill Cooper loves to talk about. Most of us hardly even remember a time when farmers were not rewarded for their protein. And who even remembers what the CWB even stands for? <laughs> Canadians with beer is how I remember it. Kind of a pesky thing that was long before many of your time. So over the years, now, the Weekers have been active on a number of different files, and many of these files our organization is still fighting to this day. So we've all felt the impact of poor rail service this year and other years, and during the debate for Bill C-49, the wheat growers were actively in contact with MPs and senators to pass the bill. We were in Ottawa for its quick passage and at the end of the debate, and the bill was passed. Uh, Jim already gave credit to our director, Daryl Fransu, who did 1,180,000 interviews, was the last count that I heard. <laughs> so if you think you don't have time for egg policy, talk to somebody like Daryl who managed to fit that in. We've also been active on the trade file, of course, supporting the comprehensive and progressive Trans-Pacific Partnership. And the same for the controversy around NAFTA. It's too early to say uh, what the final agreement is going to look like, um, but certainly we need those kinds of agreements with Canada and the US. It'll be in our best interest to see a new agreement come of, out of all those tweets. I mean, healthy negotiations. <laughs> of course, you've likely all heard about the GM wheat event that was found in southern Alberta. This has already done our industry harm our sales harm, and our reputation harm. So we must do what we can to ensure that this doesn't happen again. Public trust. I could speak uh, all day on this topic and the obligation that I believe farmers now have to reach out to consumers and answer the questions they have about the food that's grown and the modern agricultural practices that we use today. Instead of talking all day about this topic, I'm going to just encourage each of you to find some way throughout your day to make sure that you're sharing the message about what you're doing. There's terrible stories already about the uses of antibiotics, the uses around genetically modified wheat like we just saw, and the, a whole list of other issues. So if there's something that you're doing on your farm today that you're not talking about, ask yourself if you can live without it. Because I truly wonder if we would be in the situation where we're talking about number seven, which is the carbon tax, if we had told our public about all of the amazing practices we're using, like no-till technology. Grading discrepancies with our US counterparts continues to be a huge concern for us. Wheat coming across the US border automatically receives a grade of feed wheat. This is a trade barrier and a nightmare that is waiting to happen. So we have a great relationship with our grower groups across the border, and we're working hard to let them know that we are on their side and we are trying to address this issue. The Canadian Grain Commission, you might recall that the Grain Commission is overcharging us for their menu of services. Uh, the wheat growers have called on the CGC to give the overages back to farmers. It's estimated, last I heard, the number was north of $150 million. Uh, instead of giving it back, they're contemplating a whole host of other ways to spend that money, including maybe a new building for the CGC. So that is keeping me up at night. And lastly, although not, it, it doesn't wrap up the list of issues that we're working on, is uh, your favorite policy issue and mine, the dreaded carbon tax. The Weekers have worked tirelessly with provincial and federal levels of government to remind politicians that this will hurt agriculture. They can talk about a revenue neutral taxation, but the bottom line is this tax will impact our inputs, it will impact our shipping, and everything in between. So I will leave that as a warm up to our Premier. We don't work alone as an organization. The Weekers are members and we sit on a number of other boards to make sure that we are being influential, as influential as we can. Uh, I like to, to call it infiltration. Uh, we like to inf infiltrate all kinds of other groups and organizations that are out there to make sure that our voice is being heard. So I hope tonight that I was able to make a case for you about why policy might be important. And if you still can't find time in your day to spend on these issues, then 
Let us do that for you. Get a membership, make a donation, let us work on your behalf. Let us hear that we are on the right track and let us know if you have other ideas and other ways that we can be influencing some of these issues. So Jim mentioned a couple of ways that you can get a membership if you are not a member today. And you can go online and do all of that or Norm is sitting at the desk for you and we're happy to take your membership today and get that done. I promise you that it will be the best $300 that you spend at the Farm Progress Show, except maybe if you get that electric shock massager that Jared was telling me about, because that sounds awesome. <laughs> Second best thing that you can buy at Farm Progress Show. So thank you to every one of you that continues to be a membership and give us your support. And for all of you new members, thank you for that. We really do want to hear from you. Uh, our president, Levi Wood, has his phone number all over our newsletters. And we're an organization that really does want to hear from our members. So you can call him. You can call any of us as a directors. Um, Jim forgot a whole host of things that he was supposed to say. So I'm here to tidy up the mess for him. What he did forget was that the STARS lottery tickets are also available at the desk there. Our Ag Minister, Lyle Stewart, is here with us today, and he told me he will not issue fuel exemptions unless you buy a SASC lot lottery ticket from STARS. So good job, Lyle. It's a direct quote.